we'd like to welcome you back to part three of our current event and weekly Bible study for September 27, 2015. Sorry that last part, the end got cut off, but that was the, I was going to have to end it there pretty soon anyway. So uh, let's go further here. Now more evidence of the unbelievable rank hypocrisy that we're dealing with. Here's some photos of the Pope's border wall around the Vatican. While Pope Francis is in the United States effectively advocating for a borderless America, many people are infuriated by the irony of the giant a uh, huge brick and stone wall surrounding um, his own Vatican City. Obviously, the Pope doesn't want any illegal immigrants either. Look at the wall around the Vatican. Tear that wall down. There, and that was a Twitter from somebody in there, and they show. I posted the picture here. It's gigantic. Um, I guess it's fifty to hundred feet high. It depends on where the wall's at. Here's another one. Another picture. And uh, he says, maybe you missed the giant wall around the Vatican City. Here's a pic for you. And, I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's straight up. It's, it's, it's massive. Um, during his speech before Congress, Pope Francis implored U.S. politicians to embrace migrants seeking to come into America. You mean illegal aliens. Um, so in light of all these facts about the Vatican and the Pope, and the Pope this fork-tongued, hypocritical, hell-bound devil then has the audacity to say, our world is facing a huge refugee crisis of a magnitude not seen since the Second World War. What, this whole ISIS influx of, of, of supposed Syrian refugees that are coming in? We're going to talk about that later. Evidently, that's what he's in reference to. Including thousands of persons who are led to travel north in search of a better life. No, I guess he's referring to illegal aliens there from uh, Mexico and Central America. We must not be taken aback by their numbers. It doesn't matter how many of them there are, in, in other words, even though they won't take one of them in the Vatican, uh, but rather view them as persons, seeing their faces and listening to their stories, trying to respond as best we can to their situation. You know, and again, we've already, we're already doing that. Two million, a ton of them illegal every year in the United States, but it's never enough. For Satan, it is never enough. And then you have a hypocritical fork-tongued devil like this who won't take one person into the Vatican, okay, and lecturing us on how we need to take them in as, as an American. I know, I know I have other listeners in other places, but even in like European countries, they're going to be, you know, obviously they're doing that now over there big time, you know, with what we're seeing. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later as, as we get into that further. Now let's go ahead into the next report. Red alert. Catholic Pope says Jesus Christ failed on the cross. He said it and never expounded on his comment as you'd expect. No explanation. Let's listen for it for ourselves here. At times, our efforts and... You can barely hear him in the background, but, but um, the other guy's interpreting. Works seem to fail and not produce fruit. We need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure. The failure of the cross. Wow. I mean, he didn't just end it by saying it ended in failure, but the failure of the cross, which is the very reason the blood that was shed on the cross of Christ is the very reason, is the only way you're going to gain entrance to heaven. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. But primarily his sacrifice and his shed blood on the cross of Christ. And this stinking <laughs> slime bag from the pit of hell has the audacity to say that Christ's life ended in failure, particularly the failure at the cross. I, I mean... I can be nothing but enraged. Righteous indignation, which is an attribute of God. Be ye angry and sin not. Hard not to sin when I hear that. I'll be honest. I'm only human, and that is a, that's a tough one there. Because this guy goes around in this, I mean, this droning. It sounds like he just took a handful of quaaludes before he gives any speech. I mean, he, he sounds like, like he's drugged out of his mind he could barely even utter a sentence 
most hypocritical devil on the most evil pope probably the world's ever seen or known as far as just his his unbelievable liberal evil satanic policies and now he's going to tell me how jesus christ failed particularly the failure at the cross which is the greatest victory that the world's ever seen Because Jesus Christ defeated Satan at the cross. The battle's still raging, okay? But the war has already been won. Ultimately, through the Lord Jesus Christ, through his shed blood. He took the keys from Satan. He took captivity captive. And he's ever seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. So don't tell me Jesus Christ failed at the cross. I, <laughs> oh, you deluded sick devil. May God rain down his fury on your wicked, your wicked tongue. In the sight of all men, that all men would see and fear and declare the work of God, that they would wisely consider of God's doing and that the righteous would be glad in the Lord and trust in him and all the upright and hard would glory according to Psalm 64. I, it was it'd be like King Agrippa turning, basically being infested with, you know, worms and rotting right in front of you. That would be fitting for this devil. A lot of people get saved. You realize if that happened, if he uttered something like that, and then all of a sudden that happened. You know, people, how many people would get saved? The, the fear of God that would fall upon the earth. If they saw the supposed highest religious figure on the planet utter something blasphemous a, a lot of people who people believe this guy is 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 god's representative on the planet that he is the vicar of christ the substitute of jesus christ on this planet that he's infallible papal infallibility everything that comes out of his mouth is foul <laughs> meaning he's infallible he's he's a foul devil blasphemous evil You know how people get saved if that happened? Oh, I'd be a wonderful thing, I think. I'm sorry you could say that's mean, but... You know how people he's taken to hell? That's what's really mean. Hell in the lake of fire is way more mean than God judging a wicked tyrant devil on planet Earth. And especially somebody that is trying to ride the coattails of Jesus Christ. And then has the audacity to say, Jesus Christ failed at the cross. Which was his greatest victory. And our greatest victory was what happened at the cross. The, and the culmination of his death, burial, and resurrection. True. But that was the hardest thing he had to go through in his life. Oh, man. I, I Wow. The Pope understands nothing of the assessment Jesus was given. An assignment he willingly took on himself and fulfilled to the letter without failure the pope really does believe this he believes jesus failed as a human being and my comment is yes that is what the catholic mass transubstantiation and all the other works-based catholic garbage is all about jesus christ failed so now you got to earn your way to heaven yeah he he he, he did something at the cross and we'll give him some credit and that's why you have the catholic mass every week so we can re-crucify him and you can continue to take the Catholic communion host and, and get more and more demon infested and this type of stuff. And you continue trying to work your way to heaven and continue keeping the seven sacraments and, and you know, getting your way bought out of purgatory and all this other garbage. Jesus is a part of that. And you got to go through Mary to get to Jesus because that's his mom and, you know, that's what they teach. But they believe he did fail. Because if they didn't believe he failed, Catholics in general included... Why would they keep going through all of this works-based garbage thinking they're earning their way to heaven? Good works will follow salvation. And they should find, and that is evidence of salvation. Faith without works is dead. I agree. I mean, you don't get saved and then, and then all of a sudden turn into a reprobate devil and have produce terrible works. Obviously, that would not be a strong indicator you were saved. <laughs> you know? But they do believe he failed. The Pope, the Pope believes Jesus did not fulfill his mission while on this world 
and the sacrifice of his body is a living sacrifice for the sins of the world. He, he doesn't believe that. That's why he's here. That's why the Catholic religion is here. To usher their faithful into hell is, is really what it's all about it's from a satanic agenda. John 10, 17 says, Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life. This is Jesus Christ talking. That I might take it again. No man taketh it from me. He didn't fail at the cross. He laid it down, but I lay down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. He could have called, you know, 10,000 angels before they even nailed him to the cross. But he didn't because he had the power. Nobody took it from him. He did it willingly. Then it says, this commandment have I received of my father. Brethren, and then um, Philippians 3, 17 through 19. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have, an have, have us for an example. Meaning mark them which walk according to the doctrine of Christ, essentially. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. You think this devil that just uttered that, saying Jesus Christ failed at the cross, you think he is, could he do anything more to prove that he is an enemy of the cross of Christ? Attacking our great, his greatest victory while he was on this planet. Well, I guess you, I guess you could say his greatest victory would be then the, 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 the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the true victory. But it was, that was made possible by the death on the cross though, ultimately. To be raised from the dead, you still have to die first, is what I mean. And he had the power to do that, and he laid down his life for all of humanity. So that we could gain access to heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. So... It, this guy couldn't do anything more to prove that he is an enemy of the cross of Christ if he tried at this point. And then the next verse, whose end is destruction. This is, this is for you, Francis Bergoglio, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, meaning they're carnal, and whose glory is their shame. See, they glory in all their vestments and all of their wealth and all that. And he comes off with all this false piety and, and, and humility and all of this garbage when the exact opposite's true. It's false humility. He's, he's performing a massive con job on the masses to have everybody think that he's so humble. He's a satanic fork-tongued devil. And he's proven that every step of the way whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. And if they speak not according to this word, it's because the Spirit of God is not in them. They, he doesn't speak according to the word. He speaks contrary to the word of God. <clears throat> Why? Because the Holy Spirit is not in him. It's another Bible verse. Colossians 2.14, blotting out the handwrite of ordinances that was against us. This is what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. But according to Pope Francis, that was his biggest failure. No, it's not. It's our greatest victory. It's our greatest hope is through the cross of the Lord Jesus. Through, I don't mean worshiping the cross. I mean through what he did on the cross. His death, burial, and resurrection. And then the next verse. And having spoiled principalities and powers. Why? Because he defeated them at the cross through his death, burial, and resurrection. He spoiled Jesus Christ's principalities and powers. Meaning these are fallen angels. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Doesn't sound like much of a failure to me. Sounds like the greatest victory the universe has ever known. I mean, after man sinned, 
This is the greatest victory the world's ever known. And it was all made possible through the cross, through, his, through him willingly giving his life. And this devil has, has the audacity to say Jesus Christ failed. He made a show of them openly, triumphing, triumphing over them in it. Satan included triumph over. 1 Corinthians 1 17 through 18 says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of wisdom, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. See, he's trying to make the cross of Christ of none effect. Pope Francis, he wants you to, to disregard it, say it's a failure. It has no, no bearing on your salvation. He's going out of his way to make the cross of Christ of none effect. So you need the Catholic Church to get you saved. What blasphemy. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us which are saved, it is the power of God. So see, the preaching to us as a born-again Bible-believing Christian, it is the power of God. So no wonder Satan, through his emissary, the Pope, would want to de-emphasize the power and the triumph of the cross. No wonder. So, and again, he's just, all he is is proving over and over again that he is a satanically possessed mouthpiece of Beelzebub. He is Satan's spokesperson. Remember, Satan can come as an angel of light. It's no marvel that his ministers can appear as ministers of righteousness. Oh, he's so righteous. He's so pious. He's so humble. There's never been a pope like him. No, I don't think there's ever been a pope as evil. So subtly evil. Of course, what we're talking about today isn't too subtle, but a lot of people aren't obviously getting the memo. <laughs> they're, they're being, you know hoodwinked, they're having the, the, the wool put o, pulled over their eyes, whatever you want to put it. Oh man, this is just unbelievable. Galatians 6.14, and, and um, the Lord convicted me about these verses when I, I saw him attack the cross, and that's why I put this into this report, these verses that I'm going over. Galatians 6.14, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. So the only thing that they're saying to glory in would be the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. But according to the Pope, it was his biggest failure. Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. It wasn't a failure. It wasn't a failure. It was the absolute quintessential opposite of it. It was the greatest triumph, the universe, that humanity could ever ask for. To gain entrance into heaven through salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross, his shed blood on the cross. This is, it's our biggest triumph. And this devil just wants to just basically, like the Bible talks about, treading something underfoot, trampling it underfoot. It's like casting your pearls before swine. Well, that, that Bible verse. He is a swine. He represents and embodies to me the worst type of evil on this planet. This, this religious, false piety, false um, humility, this facade that he puts on in order to justify his unbiblical garbage that comes out of his mouth over and over again. And so many people are, are, are like a dog returns to his vomit, that, that verse. They're just lapping it up. What a stinking devil. 
And then I saw this. I, I said, there's no way this is true. But it's true. Pope Francis to release a pop rock album. I'm not lying. Called Wake Up this November. I've already got mine pre-ordered. I admit it. I admit it. I, I couldn't resist. No. No. Just kidding. Just kidding. His unholiness will spread his message of hope, faith, and unity in the form of a progressive rock-infused album titled Wake Up this November. A time will come, the C.H. Spurgeon said, a time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. Mm, yeah. Editor's note, the editor of this report said, Charles Spurgeon said this, quote, my first contention is that providing amusement for the people is nowhere spoken of in the scriptures as a function of the church. If it is a Christian work, why did not Christ speak of it? Um... The Bible says, go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15. That is clear enough, that verse. So it would have been as if he added to this verse and provide amusement for those who do not relish the gospel. But no such words, however, are to be found in the Bible and it did not seem to even occur to Jesus to speak them. Of course it didn't. The Vatican's approved LP, a collaboration with Believe Digital, features the pontiff delivering sacred hymns and excerpts of his most moving speeches in multiple languages paired with uplifting musical accompaniment ranging from pop rock to Gregorian chant, which would be my personal favorite, the Gregorian chant anyway. Um, here's a picture of the album cover. Pope Francis, wake up. It has um, this satanic devil on the cover waving to people. Wake Up arrives November 27th with the iTunes pre-order, now available with an instant download of Wake Up, Go, Go Forward. The Argentinian-born Pope Francis has reignited a Catholic base and inspired millions outside his own religious denomination with his selfless and unifying messages that encourage climate change protection. Like, you know, that's again, just shows how, how wicked and evil this devil is. So he's got he got to brainwash the masses at, at every every turn, okay? And so this climate change thing is very very near and dear to Satan, and because he is Satan's emissary on planet Earth, then he's going to actually have to just everywhere he goes encourage climate change protection, also assistance for the homeless, and his hope for equality for all. Assistance for the homeless means we need to take in more legal aliens, even if they want to kill us and rape us and steal and pillage our you know that, that doesn't matter. Uh, even in the case of hot and bus button issues, um, oh, oh, and his hope for equity for all. Even in the case of hot button issues like same sex marriage and immigration. So again, take in more legal aliens, um, encourage same sex marriage. Go ahead and abort your babies because what is that? What do they matter? They're just little helpless babies. You know, he don't care about them. Uh, don't and, and and don't get too fanatical on the abortion thing, as as he said in the past. You know, I mean, we we don't want to make a big deal of that. You know, just you know, four thousand babies dying every day in the United States and these abortion butcheries. You know, but it's, that doesn't matter to, to him. I mean, what what do they matter? What matters is the illegal aliens, or what matters is is the wonderful, um, satanically possessed Muslims pouring into Germany and Hungary and those places that are. You know, in, in ISIS and, and, and the ones that are coming here to kill us and slit our throats and rape our, our wives and our daughters and stuff like that. that That's who we need to take in because they're the ones that really matter. Or the other legal aliens that are still pouring in from Mexico and Central America, coming here illegally and not having no regard for our laws at all whatsoever. Um, you know, they're the ones that, that, that mess. So, again, just like Obama, if it's wicked, if it's evil, okay, it's gotten to the point now where the Catholic Pope is going to be pushing that agenda. And then the climate change thing, which is the very, very uh, main chief way that they will end up stripping all of our liberty, all of our rights, all of our income, all of our property away from us, if they have their way. Okay, I'm not saying God can't shield you. I'm not saying God doesn't always preserve a remnant. I'm saying that's their goal, though, from a satanic standpoint. So the here's the track list. I'm not even going to, a lot of it's in other languages, like whatever, anyway. Um... Anyone, in there's 11 tracks, anyone see the name Jesus Christ anywhere in the list? No, but I do see song number two is a little ditty about worshiping Mary, though. Um, 
Hail Holy Queen Mary. <laughs> There's one meteor between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Mary is not, Mary did sin. Mary, Mary took sin offerings in to the temple and, and she wasn't, she didn't live in sinless perfection. Jesus had brothers after her. She's not a perpetual virgin. Total got, lies and garbage. And we don't get to Jesus Christ through Mary. And, you know, it's, it just irks me when, you know, you go to these abortion clinics and the Catholics are there and they're all praying to Mary and they're all praying with their Hindu prayer beads. I mean, the rosaries, which is where that came from. And they're all praying to Mary. And it's like, oh, you're, you're on the same team as them in a way. Because you're pagans. They're pagans. Yes, you may not want the abortions to happen in there. And, and, and I respect you for that. And, and I get that. Obviously, I get that. But ultimately, you're going to hell if you trust in that man-made workspace garbage. And anything you're doing outside of there, prayer-wise, how can God hear you? You're in a false devil works-based black death cult that is an affront to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not going to hear your prayers. Your prayers are in vain. And God told us to avoid vain repetition when we pray. And that's what the rosary is. And that's why the Catholics tell them to do it. Because anything that's against the Bible, ultimately the Catholic Church is typically going to end up recommending in some way, shape, or form. Not everything, but a lot, obviously. A ton. Rote, repetitive prayers are forbidden in the Bible. We're to avoid vain repetition. When they're praying to Mary outside of abortion clinics, they're basically invoking devils. They're basically calling out to the goddess Mary to stop this. She ain't gonna stop nothing. She's part of that. In fact, a lot of the deities that the uh, witches and warlocks and them worship, as far as that goes, the primary de deities they, they will dedicate the sacrifices to for a given day at abortion clinics a lot of them are female deities like um lilith artemis child sacrifice deities of a goddess version isis would be in there so you have to understand mary the, the whole Mary thing is, is just a repackaging of a lot of the things like the goddess Diana and the goddess Isis and Aphrodite. And it just depends what era and what culture you were in. So when they're, they're, they're trying to go, go um, to these abortion clinics and appeal to Mary, she's on their team. Or this deity posing as Mary is on their team. It's just pure wickedness so let's click here to listen to a sample of one of the tracks here do i still have this thing up yeah i do it, 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 <laughs> you just oh you gotta love it you have received mercy the sword of god's love go out to the world so that by mercy shown to you they <laughs> your friends co-workers neighbors countrymen everyone of this great continent may know the side the mercy of i can't even understand this guy sounds like he's talking with a mar mouthful of marbles sounds like he took a handful of quaaludes before he before he's rocking the mic here and 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 he's uh talking with a mouthful of marbles and yet they've got this to this 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 real trendy pop rock theme and this is just one of the songs wake up go go forward so he's telling the, I guess the Catholic faithful to wake up and go, go forward and, 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 and serve his agenda, you know, implement, you know, all the climate change and, and be good Catholics and, you know, earn your way to heaven and all this other garbage. So anyway, I just want to play a little bit of that. Um, and then we have this comment from a listener that just came in today, uh, Patricia, longtime listener. And she said, um, hi, Dr. Scott, I live in DC and the Pope was just here. I was stuck at the laundromat for over two hours the day the Pope was paraded downtown. Oh, man, that was probably a bad time to go do laundry. There is a television in the laundromat, and I was praying against Francis furiously the whole time. I was in the laundromat. I was very uncomfortable around the Hispanics who were camped out at the laundromat because they're some of, I'm sorry, but they are some of the worst as far as just 
absolute idolatrous worship of this guy. Okay. Um, and again, a lot of it, they're bringing their paganism up from Mexico and from Central America and they're amalgamating it into their own version of whatever religion. And maybe, maybe it is straight out Catholicism. Maybe they don't have a lot of other things commingled. It's still idolatry, you know. And anyway, um, I was uncomfortable around the Hispanics who were camped out at the laundromat watching the motorcade with rapt attention. I did not feel safe there. I became nauseated after listening to his screaming crowds for over two hours. First off, let me state here. I, if I know for a fact someone has, oh, no, stay here. If I know for a fact that someone has an, a satanic anointing, I usually, oh, if I do know that, I usually make every effort not to listen to them directly. That's why I didn't play too long on that clip. So do, I do not want to hear any of the Pope speak, Obama speak, Benjamin Krem speak, and so on. Benjamin Krem is the, is the uh, like the uh, Pied Piper, the, uh, the uh, false prophet um, for Maitreya. Okay. Anyway. Um, well, I cannot watch the news right now without hearing the Pope speak. This man is supposedly from South America, yet he sounds like Count Dracula. But what about Count Chocula? We, we haven't mentioned him in a while. Anyway, um, I have never heard anyone from any South American country with an accent like that. I am watching a documentary right now and John Paul II has a soundbite. Now that man too sounds like Count Dracula, yet he was from Poland. I know several uh, Polish people and they don't like John Paul II at all. It makes me wonder what the real mother tongue of both of these men really is. Well, John Paul II was originally a Zyklon B gas salesman and he sold that gas to places like Auschwitz and the in the uh, the uh, through IG Farben. IG Farben is the one that made Zyklon B gas, which is what they used in the gas chambers at Auschwitz and all of the prison. And he was a he was the guy that went around from prison camp to prison camp. John Paul II early in his early in his career before he ever even got into the Catholic Church, and he sold them Zyklon B gas. It's 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 out there. The information is out there. And then afterward, what he did is he went into the Catholic Church as the perfect cover so that they couldn't trace down his Nazi war crimes. It was like a sanctuary for him. And like I said, the Catholics enabled the Nazis and they were for the Nazis and they hid the Nazis. And eventually he became Pope. I did a whole study or a part of a study on it. So, you know, this is the type of people we're dealing with. Taylor asked me the other day, she says, what's the criteria for being Pope? And I said, well... You need to be the most satanic, evil, sold out to Satan person that will totally fulfill their agenda as humanly possible. Um, if you're that level of evil, there's a good shot you got at being Pope. I mean, that's kind of my opinion. And and these are the, the scum of the planet that get this, that attain this position. Um... Secondly, she says the satanic anointing on this Pope is so powerful that when I was watching a news clip on his speech to Congress, I became profoundly nauseated, so much so that I had to turn off the news clip. Honestly, I was so surprised. You and I have discussed how Benjamin Krem made hundreds of listeners on Coast to Coast physically ill, and he did. That was when uh, Wall Street Journal and, and um, Anderson Cooper and all of them were advertising for the emergence of Maitreya. Now, I think God pushed that timetable back, but Krem went on coast to coast, and I believe it was George Norrie, and it was the only time he has ever had to shut down a broadcast. He, he got physically ill. George Norrie did. I don't know if it was George Norrie or Art Bell, but one of them. They, physically ill. I think it was George Norrie. And um, I did that. Um, key and star sign. I believe that was where we Or Norrie in the keyword search box. I reported on that. And he's had, I mean... Nori interviews so many evil people, so many high-level occultists, so many people that would be considered witches or warlocks or whatever, and, and New Agers. And in all his years, it was the only time he ever had to shut things down because he couldn't go on anymore because he got physically ill from doing this interview with Benjamin Krem, Maitreya's mouthpiece, Maitreya's Pied Piper and False Prophet. Okay, so yeah, this is this is a um, this is a dynamic that can happen, uh, and and here Nor is not even a Christian, but um, there's a lot of people that got sick just listening to the coast to coast interview when that happened. She goes on to say, now 
I do not see how anyone can listen to this man and not become ill. He could have had, had a very heavy anointing when addressing Congress, but that was so sickening, I do not want to hear that man speak again. I was wondering how many others have written you and told you it makes them ill. If so, how many? This is a massive wake-up call. And additional proofs this man is an agent of the devil, even though there is enough evidence con to convict him without this. Uh, thank you, Pat. Um, yeah, I, I don't get. I haven't got ill listening to him. I, I tend to get really righteously indignant when I listen to him. Um, there's certain things that will make certain Christians ill and others. Like when I drove into San Francisco, I got physically ill. But by the time I had been there for a couple hours, I started getting ill. Like my stomach, and I'm like, I got to get out of here. I have got to get out of this place. I don't want to be here. It's so wicked. It's so evil. But not everybody gets that. Doesn't mean I'm Mr. Super Christian. Uh, it's just going to be how the Holy Spirit that lives inside you is grieved, I think. You know, and and I certain things that I see now, I mean, it, you, I'll start to get ill. This isn't one of those that actually made me ill. I get very righteous and indignant. Um, and I really want to pray against this fork tongue devil, um, because he needs to be stopped, you know, I, and I want God to do it. I want God to, you know, literally rain down fury on this devil so that he's not allowed to continue taking people to hell, which is the most merciful thing I could ask for as regarding his fate, because he's only storing up more wrath of God against him the longer he is allowed to live, you know, and I'm not, I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and do anything. I'm just saying, I pray God does it just like God did what he did with Tomorrowland or tomorrow world or whatever with this thing. Um, this rain that I haven't seen since we've moved up here, you know? So, um, yes, I pray God does that in, in, in that massive fear of God falls upon those that see this happen. I think that would be the best thing that could happen to this devil and, um, anyway, that, but that's just me. I'm funny that way. Uh, let's go forward here. Um, all right. Uh, let me see where we're at on time here. Okay. We're good. Um, the next one, Pope Francis, U S visit and dates, schedule and dates. The, um, pontiff invites Rick Warren to speak at Philadelphia conference on the family. This just happened evidently. I haven't heard anything about him speaking there, but he was invited, and, and this was all set pretty much in stone. Um, Rick Warren, senior pastor of Saddleback Church, and here's a picture of him shaking hands with the Pope. Uh, senior pastor of Saddleback Church has announced that he will be speaking in Philadelphia later this month at the World Meeting of Families. This just happened like yesterday. Even uh, m World Meeting of Families event to commence Pope Francis's highly anticipated visit to the United States. Next month, Pope Francis is coming to America for a world gathering on families. He told the congregation, I'm not a Catholic and we have many differences with the Catholics, but they love the Lord. Just like Rick Warren loves the Lord. That's why they're going by so strictly by the word of God, because they love the Lord so much. And we have much in common with that because they love the Lord as much as we do. Well, Rick Warren and Catholics. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could compare that, you know, we believe in the Bible Actually, no, Rick, you don't. You you slimy devil. You don't believe in the Bible. You believe in twisting the Bible. You believe in another gospel. But you don't believe in the word of God. By their fruits you shall know them. And you are a wicked devil that has shown himself to be that over and over again. You know. We believe in the Bible and the Trinity and in Jesus and the resurrection. So that's what we have. We need to have common ground with everybody. You'll see that theme over and over, common ground. No, 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 actually we don't from a biblical standpoint. And I'm going to prove that right now. Galatians 1, 6 through 8 says, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is exactly what Rick Warren and the Pope preach. It's another gospel. Okay. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So let you, Rick Warren, let you, Pope, and all of your devil ilk, let you all be accursed. 
That's what I say to you. Because all you're doing is taking people to hell. I pray God judge you. I pray his righteous judgment fall upon you. And all the people helping you. And all the Satan, the demons and devils helping you. That all men would see and fear and declare the work of God. That they would wisely consider of his doing. And that the righteous would be glad in the Lord and trust in him. And all the upright in heart would glory. Their whole goal is to get as many people into hell as possible. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 17, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So if, if Rick Warren was a Christian, which he's not, he is not supposed to be yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord or agreement hath Christ with Belial? the devil, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? An infidel, somebody that has turned their back on the faith, somebody that's that's trying to push some other gospel, an infidel, an apostate, a heretic. That's what Rick Warren is, that's what the Pope is. And all those that would follow him, pretty much. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same he has brought into bondage. So if you let Rick Warren or the Pope overcome you, even though they've promised you all this liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. And of whom a man is overcome, the same he has brought into bondage. See, if you could see like the typical Catholic that's following the Pope, if you could see spiritually like for a minute or so, you would probably see some type of, 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 well, you'd see a lot of demonic activity blinding them to the truth. Who knows? You might see some type of spiritual chains, bondage that they've been brought into because they've allowed these fork-tongued devils to overcome them. They've, they've given themselves over to their headship. That's why it's very important what church you're going to and, and, and what headship you're putting yourself under because... You know, of whom a man has overcome, the same he has brought into bondage. And you don't realize it's happening because you can't see spiritually that it is happening. Unless you have your third eye open, and I don't advise that. So, this is not something we want to mess around with. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. That's because the Holy Spirit dwells within a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. Okay? Wherefore, come out from among them, and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So we're supposed to come out from among them, among the Rick Wars, among the popes, among these false religious leaders, whether they're pseudo-Christian or Catholic or, or, I don't know, Hinduism, Buddhism, whatever. Come out from among them, and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. We're not supposed to yoke up with them. And come in ecumenical unity to usher in the, the, the one world religion under Antichrist that the Bible predicts. God would want us to have no part of that. He would tell us to come out from among them. To be not partakers of their plagues, as the Bible says. Romans 6, 17 and 18, which would apply equally as much as it would to Rick Warren and the Pope. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them, which is what we're doing today which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, which is, I mean, Rick Warren and, and the Pope, you know, the things they've done contrary to the doctrine which you have learned as far as the word of God is, is their, their legion, and avoid them. But we're supposed to mark them and we're supposed to avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, their own carnal desires. And by good words and fair speeches, just like you, you hear Rick Warren giving and you hear this, the, the Pope giving, good words and fair speeches deceive what the hearts of the simple. If you're deceived by one of these people, you're basically telling God, I'm a simple person. And I don't mean simple in a good way. I'm a simpleton. My grandma used to use that all the time. Oh, you're a simpleton. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Anyway, um, but what, what's this, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? He who trusteth in his own heart is a fool. 
by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. If you're bound up in, in, in following any of these people, you need to get out. If you're not saved, go to my homepage at contendingfortruth.com and click on the True Salvation tab and listen to those audios in the, in the order they're in. That's the most important decision you'll ever make. You need to establish that. So marking these people and avoiding them are what we should be doing. We're not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers that present another gospel. We're supposed to mark them, avoid them, um, get away from them, expose them, reprove the unfruitful works of darkness and have no fellowship with them, to make manifest, shed light on them. It's biblical to do that. Why? Wouldn't you want to be warned if, if you were being deceived by somebody? Sure. Um, Adam said that they were another email he sent me about tomorrow word that they were, they were seven day Adventists down there handed out their, whatever their literature and they were trying to counteract them, you know? And I, I said, yeah, I said, they're, they're one of the most dangerous cults there are. They literally, and then she said something about is, is she tried to give it the stuff to him and he kept politely saying no, because see, they want to satanically get some cursed thing into your hand it's important for satan to get some cursed literature whether it be seventh day adventist whether it be watchtower jehovah witness garbage whether it be the mormon stuff remember that's cursed don't bring it in your house don't do it i'm telling you you bring in a curse in your house don't bring them into your house either don't bid them godspeed lest you be partakers of their plagues you want to deal with them outside your house, do that. But, but you know, don't invite them in your house either. Or bid them Godspeed. You know, bless you be partakers of their, <laughs> you know. I'm not saying you don't try to help them or, or witness to them. But let's face it, if somebody's at your house trying to convert you, there's a very low likelihood you're probably going to convert them. It could happen. God could do it. But if they've got enough boldness to actually come to your front door, they're probably pretty sold out to whatever devil that's possessing them and they were trying to counteract this this literature that, that the seven-day adventists were and i mean the seven-day adventists literally believe that when when he finally said no i please no I, I i don't want this literature thank you but no she said remember to keep the sabbath day holy or something like that now i've done a whole teaching on the sunday versus sabbath thing okay the whole hebrew roots garbage about that uh, you can just key in Sunday or Sabbath at continuefortruth.com. But the Seventh-day Adventists are also a really big one on that. And they, they believe literally that Sunday worship is literally taking the mark of the beast. That's why they so emphasize it in their works-based devil death cult. Started, started by that witch Ellen White, that demon-possessed witch. And she was. She was a demon-possessed witch. Well-documented. All of the garbage. And she's the one that started that that stinking cult. Ellen G. White. Got a whole file. Never did a teaching on that. It'd be a big one. I, I, I'd like to. It's just so hard when you have all these breaking current events. But I have a file on them. So if you need it, just let me know. I'll, I'll pop it over to you. Um, <clears throat> and then... You, you look at, um, let's go back to the main report. It says, there are probably going to be a million people in Philadelphia at this final event with Pope Francis. He asked me to be the final speaker. The purpose-driven life author continued amid cheering and applause. Um, so they were, oh, everybody's so happy at Rick Warren's purpose-driven church, Saddleback Church, one of the largest churches in America, apostate devil churches in America. And when they heard that he was going to be... Um, the final speaker, the Pope had asked him, they, they were erupted in cheering and applause. You know, and I, I just got to believe that these people that are following these people like Joel Osteen and, and Rick Warren and them, ultimately, some of them will get out of it. But things aren't even bad, and they're choosing to follow. 
apostate reprobate devils like this. It just shows they have no true love for the truth. And the Bible says the main cause that will bring judgment on the world in general is God is going to send them strong delusion. Why? Because they had no love for the truth. They didn't want the truth. And when you have people that are wildly applauding Rick Warren because the Pope wants him to be his final, his final speaker, how can I think you have any love for the truth? How is it that you could be saved? I, I, I pray to God you do get saved. I pray to God you get your, your, your eyes open and, and you get woke up. And I'm sure some will. And we should pray for that. But how is that evidence of, of you having love for the truth or of you having any kind of discernment whatsoever? It's really scary, but it's, it's the norm. And then you have another, and I'm not going to get into it, but it's just a headline that reads TV preachers, Copeland and Robeson glowingly describe the meeting with the Pope to tear down quote walls of division. Now I did a whole study on that. This, this was a little bit older. This happened like, I think last year, but if you can either Copeland or Robeson, um, you can hear that whole teaching I did on that because that was that that's another sect of apostate Christianity that are really the internet charismatic, typically charismatic evangelists, Pentecostal that are yoking up with Catholicism. I mean, there's a whole sect of Catholics called charismatic Catholics. I, I had one at my Bible study a long time ago when I was in the charismatic church. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end part three here and we will go to part four next. God bless you.